Hey there guys, it's Metro, and with the renewed interest in leveling on classic servers, especially the Fresh Start Elysium server, a lot of people have been talking about the fastest way to level. On a server with this much competition, I say, inequivocably, it is grinding. So today I'm going to show you a quick guide on how to grind for each minor level bracket and the areas to do so, and give a little explanation about why I like each area. As you see on the screen, my warrior was done exclusively with grinding, and still hit 60 in barely over seven days played. That's on top of stopping at 58 to begin the gearing process doing dungeons, which are incredibly slow. I think I got to 58 at about six days played. As a caveat, what we're doing here is making use of the dynamic respawns, the amount of players in each zone, causing the dynamic respawns to be greater and looking for areas that are out of the way. We're also requiring a lot of BOEs, especially for a warrior, but this will work on any class. The more gold you could funnel into the leveling process, the better off grinding will be overall. So I'm going to break this down based on level brackets within two to three levels. If you're struggling with one of them, the path and stuff doesn't work very well for you, then I recommend going back to the previous one and grinding. A lot of these are going to be moderate competition, but I'm telling you there's going to be a lot more people trying to do quests. All of these mobs are re relatively unused for quests. A few of them might overlap with some quests, but in general these are not routes that people will be using to get the quest done in the zone. So let's get right into it. So most of this is going to be done on the actual video, but I do want to try to talk about some of the routes in the areas. I really like the Mulgore area right outside of Thunder Bluff, especially for the first five to 10 levels and going all the way till 12 actually in this zone. It's really nice. A lot of people start here, but they don't grind. A lot of people start in the orc area instead or the undead area. I think there's a lot more undead. You know, you got priests, rogues, etc. people trying to PvP. And otherwise, you got warriors and hunters and other stuff like that starting as troll or orc. So definitely Torin is the least represented starting zone, and it's got some amazing grinding. So even if you're not starting Torin, I would definitely recommend running here. Uh, the first five, one to five levels, just so everybody's aware, are not going to be covered here. Uh, they're going to be way too crowded to find any grinding spots at all that are going to work for you guys. So however you want to get to level five, that's up to you. But regardless, you should be able to just do a quest or two and kill some mobs along the way, and you get the first five levels in less than, less than 15 minutes usually. So same deal here. As you saw on the map there, we're kind of just moving up the left side of the zone. Uh, that's basically the best way to look at it. Chop it up into three sections, and that's how you're going to get five to ten. And it's going to just be back and forth on the mobs I'm highlighting here, okay? I'm clicking every mob that's available in this path. Sometimes they might not be here. Obviously, if there's intense competition, you're going to have to try to take smaller routes. But the good thing about the way the server is set up is, say I click on 35 mobs in the seven to eight level section if all 35 mobs are dead then the other the first mob that was killed is going to respawn much quicker do you understand so that's the way the dynamic respawn thing happens you're going to see a lot of dead mobs over the course of this 17 minute video a lot of mobs are alive as well if i come back five minutes later the ones that are dead are going to be back the ones that are alive might be dead as well you know so that's just how it works if you're going to grind you have to be aware of that sometimes you have to sit there every once in a while waiting but if this is an ideal situation you only have to go through five to 10 mobs before the first few respawn. So now we've moved up even further. Once again, we're just following the left side of the Mulgore zone. Very straightforward. If for some reason this, this doesn't work for you guys, you could do the right side of the zone as well. It's pretty similar, but the right side has a lot more quest activity and mobs that would run and stuff like that. So I would definitely recommend a lot of beasts. You're going to be grinding a lot of beasts. A lot of people try to grind on humanoids, but I would very much recommend against this because humanoids will run. So especially if you're a melee, it can be particularly dangerous and pain in the ass, really but as any type of class doesn't matter a lot of the mobs that you're going to be targeting are yellow throughout this course uh, the 17 minute video so uh, hopefully it'll be easy for you guys no matter who you are but either way if you follow this path this is exactly what i did on my warrior uh, mob mob for mob every time i level a horde character on any of these private servers which i've done i think four or five times now to 60 this is the exact route i take every time Obviously not every realm is as populated as especially the fresh start realm will be. But I'm telling you, there's no there's no real reason for people to be out where we are currently and especially going up all the way to the right side here. So now we're on Thunder Bluff uh, right to the right of it. So we're right across from it. And you're just going to follow these mobs and you're going to kind of go around like an arc around Thunder Bluff. You see there's a couple people doing some probably a quest to kill wolves or something. I'm not sure why two people are grinding together. But it brings up a good point. Uh, if you have a friend 
friend you want to level with, do not do this, okay? If two people grind together, you are going to go very, very slowly. This is solely for a solo player, somebody who's trying to level by themselves as expediently as possible. It may not be the fastest way to level in complete vacuum, but this is very consistent. Mobs, uh, I'm telling you, you know, they're a level or two below you, and at best, they're the same level as you. I'll try to never include a mob that you shouldn't, that, you know, is, is more than a level higher than you. But if you can't kill a mob that's your level and higher than you, then you definitely need to consider getting some BOEs. Uh, so a lot of people talk about like, oh, well, I'm struggling to level a warrior, I'm struggling paladin. You know, some of these classes are a little bit more difficult. But the best way to approach this is to level something that is quick and easy and then use that level character to funnel resources to another character. So anyway, that's 1 through 12. We're going to do that in Mulgor. Now we're in the Barrens. Now this first spot I'm going to show you guys is not going to be the best spot, especially on the Elysium PvP server. But I did want to show it. If there's a way you can get all of these mobs, they are incredibly high density and incredibly high value. They drop some nice grays as well. It's like a pelt or something like that. And then there's some mobs that kind of arc around the left side. And this is just right outside of the crossroads. So yeah, on the PvP, the new uh, Elysium server, there is going to be a lot of people here. And then there's these uh, humanoids here that you can consider if you're really not wanting to leave the area. But as you see, I immediately start running into more players. So instead of that, I would suggest over here instead. So you see the map. Uh, this area is going to be a lot quieter, a lot less people, although you do see a few people here in the video, so I'm surprised by that. This is an area I usually come to when the other ones are inundated and there's almost nobody here, but as you see, two people grinding. But yeah, that's a lot of mobs that are dead there. If all of those were alive, that was 10 plus mobs. And then we come around the corner and we see more of these savannah huntresses, similar to the ones we were killing on the other side of the, the road there. And then there's going to be some mobs underneath that tower. And as you see, some players running back and forth. A lot of them looks like they're not even killing anything. And then even more cats. So this is probably the best density pack, uh, the route that I'm showing you out of the three. We're going to show three for the 12 to 14 bracket. But there's also, you know, the potential because people are on the road, they might stop by and kill a mob as they run. Uh, but regardless, like I said, you really want to try to get a healthy variance of these these areas. That's why I'm giving you kind of like a, a broad range. Uh, if you're struggling to kill anything, just, just go to a different one, go to different mobs, or even go backwards. And now this one is kind of like your last ditch effort here. This one's not as good, but it's right next to the area you're going to go to next. So for example, if you're 13 and you're kind of already uh, looking to get out of the area you were in before, you can come to this area here, as you see on the map. Or if you're like already 14 and you're moving into the next area, you can kind of double back around there and come back to that. But it's essentially going to overlap with the next area I'm giving you. So just kind of run around here. Uh, it's There's not a lot of mobs, but it's once again kind of in an area where people are just going to run by. There's no quest here at all. And a lot of people are going to be running past this, but they're not actually going to be killing anything. And now we're on the other side of the road where we were just showing you. And this is what I do from 13 to 16 on every single character. Th these were my fastest three levels on my warrior. At this point at level 13, I had just gotten a really nice weapon. I can't remember. Some very nice two-handed weapon. We were well into, you know, we had a couple points into the, the arms tree. And we were starting to hit really hard. So that's a big part of it. Like I said, if you guys aren't able to keep up in gear, then grinding is not going to be worth it. If you're going to just try to grind and never get any BOEs, you're going to be in grays. You understand that? You don't get any gear from doing this other than actual drops from mobs, which are going to be rare. So you need to use the money you're spending on grinding or perhaps saved up from another character to make this even faster. And if you can do, which is exactly what I did in my warrior, I was able to get you know one to where I wanted to end, which wasn't quite 60, but pretty close in less than six days played. And I, I say that is pretty good for a server like this. Okay, so there you go. We did uh, three different spots for to level about 15 or 16. You could do uh, whatever, you know, any of those four spots that you like. And now we're into 15 and 17. Now we're looking for more of these, these cats. Okay, once again, very high density mobs that are not for any type of quest. And uh, there's going to also be surrounding them hyenas and these giraffes and some other raptors and stuff like this. There's two really strong locations where you're going to find them. This is one of them on this side of the, the barrens. And then there's another uh, one on the middle, like kind of like right north of the crossroad that I'm going to show you as well. So... But <coughs> Jesus, excuse me. Between one of these two, you should have plenty of uh, plenty of mobs. 
is really they're really really high density so very likely that you know if you kind of just camp one of these bush spawns where there's kind of like all the shrubs here over there as well you see that if you just kind of camp one of these and there's tons of people here they'll be respawning as you're killing a previous pack in fact later i'm going to show you uh, the dynamic spawns in action uh, the mob spawns on top of a guy who's running away from another mob and he aggroves another mob and he, i'm pretty sure he dies so it's kind of funny i, I should have helped them but i don't have time for that <laughs> anyway yeah lots of options down here and this is actually going to take us all the way down into our next area as well that's something i like to do when i'm grinding i like to do this all in one sitting I like to go, you know, every two levels, I'll go back to the town if I need to. But otherwise, I like to just keep chucking it out. And sometimes I'll find myself kind of just like on autopilot. So here we are at the next location, like I said, north of Crossroads. And it's the same thing. This area is a little bit more populated, though, because there are these, uh, it's one of the named cats, I think, is over in this area. I can't remember, but it's a pretty common quest. Everybody tries to do it. But this is even higher density. Uh, it's much higher profile, though. I think a lot more people are going to pass by this area and try to kill these cats. Even when I was leveling on the old NOS, this area was pretty highly farmed. Uh, but the good thing about it is you can kind of loop back around to the north side as well. There's like that little hill kind of right in the middle. You can see it in the top left of the screen there as I go by it. Uh, that It's kind of like a good way to to judge where you are in the, the area. And you can kind of loop back around here. All these mobs I'm clicking on, you know, some humanoids as well up there if you're feeling feeling feisty. It's not a, it's not a bad idea, especially if it's uh, overly farmed. But anyway yeah so that's pretty much everything i think at this point uh, this is kind of when your characters are going to start developing you're going to be getting close to 20 and the speed should either be you know considerably noticeable like where you're where you're getting the mobs or it's just something that you have to kind of go back a set and do one set earlier because you're struggling with depending on the class of course now here is a pretty interesting route i found this one a while back uh, there's, it's kind of like this scar in the world, like this, this ridge that's in the, in the, the barrens area down south here, kind of separates the northern from the southern barrens, and this is where the mobs start to get a bit higher. Now I'm clicking on a lot of mobs, but as we get uh, to the other side of the bridge, we're going to start finding mobs that are a bit too high, like they're, they're not in the range of the other mobs. So if you're struggling, once you get to the bridge, you could loop back around by the quill bore. There's a few more yellows, like uh, zebras and raptors and all that stuff down there. You can kill them. They're about level 17 to 18. So that may be more appropriate for you guys if you're struggling. But on this side of the bridge, you're going to have more 18 to 20 mobs. And like I said, you really should be able to kill mobs that are one level higher than you. So if you're, you know, 18 at this point, I would start coming onto this side of the bridge. Just make one big loop back and forth. I mean, it's going to take you, if you kill every single mob from that I'm showing you right now, if they're all alive, that is, it's going to take you over an hour to go from one side to the other. So you really shouldn't have any, any reason that you can't just kind of stay on one side of the bridge but now that we're getting over here these are more appropriate for level 19s so i would even say that this route can be done all the way to 20. these mobs are going to kind of overlap once again so now this is where i was talking about previous uh, and i was talking about like doing this all in one sitting so i this is all kind of one big circle it's about to kind of reconnect with the, the first set of those cats the level 15 cats that i was showing you and we're, we're basically yeah you see we're right back there but yeah i just kind of followed that scar now from 18 to 20, this is where I would usually, I would do, the only quest I would actually do in the Barrens is on these quill bore, but there's no way you're going to be able to do this from 18 to 20, so there's no way on the new server, guys, you're not going to be able to, that quest is going to be way too populated. Uh, but regardless, this is some really high density mobs. Uh, this is probably actually, I was just scouting around here and I found this, I wouldn't normally, I wouldn't normally fight these mobs here for, for 18 to 20, but this is actually really high density. Uh, those, those like Thunderhawk hatchlings, it looks like they are. Those are a dangerous mob. They do lightning damage or like nature damage, whatever, but it's like a cast. So if you're not something that can lock them down, like if you don't have a stun or earth shock or something like that, you're probably going to struggle with those mobs. I would try to avoid them. Now, there's a named mob there. I'm not actually sure what that is. That may be one of the mobs that when you kill, it drops a quest item that you could turn in. I'm going to show you one of those in a little bit here. But regardless, that's 18 to 20. It's a very high density spot that I kind of just found out about. And now we're moving on a little bit here. This is just north or kind of east of Camp T, one of the two flight paths in the zone. So I'd recommend setting your hearth here or, you know, just being aware of where the zone, the, 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 like the areas in the zone are to give yourself a point of reference as you see there's other people farming here but that doesn't even matter there's still tons of mobs alive over to the left side you're going to see a lot of mobs in this kind of like crevice right behind the quill bore area which was the quest i was describing before so there's going to be a lot of people in that area but not necessarily here 
So there's that named mob I was talking about. Somebody actually whispered me asking where he was while I was recording this. So I'm pretty sure that is that you kill that mob and it drops a quest. So that might be another quest to consider doing. Uh, if he's there while you're grinding, just kill him. And you turn it in, I think you probably get full. Now, another thing about those uh, those Kodo there, they will aggro independently. At least they did on Old Nos. I, I should have tested it on the new, uh, the new core, but... On the old NOS, since they're all yellow, they will aggro independently. So you, you got like 15 mobs walking in a big pack that you can pick off one by one. Anyway, here's where we're going to finish off this video and in the Barons in general. Okay, 22 to 25 is going to be done here. Uh, it's nothing special, but this is a really, this is probably the best out of all the areas I've shown you. This is going to be the best one. A lot of people are going to try to leave the Barons at 20. And that's because, you know, there's this ingrained mentality that Barons is 1 to 20. A lot of people don't realize, you know, you can go all the way to 25 in this zone, especially with grinding. And there's even some quests that are a little bit more appropriate at like the high 20s. But regardless, this is what I do every single character. Even on Alliance, I'll come here because there's usually so few characters that it doesn't even matter if I'm Alliance or not. You know what I mean? It's probably not recommended. This is, of course, only for Horde, this one. I'm going to do a separate video for Alliance. But this is, in my opinion, the best spot. You're going to get three whole levels. You could get four or five. I've done, uh, I think on my Warrior, I actually did to 26 here as well. Uh, but yeah, there's plenty of mobs. And you could also kind of like go, you kind of just got to see it. There's a mob on the left side of this tree. There's like two or three more mobs on the left side of that tree that we're kind of just seeing on the left side of the screen back there. So you can go over that way as well if it's kind of getting like high competition here. But this path and route is such a long one. You really should not have any issues. You know, there's like four or five groups of probably 10 mobs in this route. So if you start at the beginning and there's people there, just keep running. Eventually you'll find mobs that are alive. And once you start tagging them, you're going to just become, you know, you're going to be right in the middle of the the natural respawn that's happening around you. So anyway, that's everything. If you guys have any questions about grinding, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next bracket video.